Honda, the company who has brought us everything from the NSX to the jet and lawnmowers, is making a big announcement. Honda, just like most multi-billion dollar manufacturing companies, source many of their parts from China. China, of course, has plentiful resources and affordable labor and even in some cases, free labor, which affords large companies like Honda the lowest manufacturing cost possible, which leads to less expensive products for the buyers and more profits for Honda. But what if the once cheap parts are no longer available due to part scarcity and soaring raw material costs due to factors such as the war in Ukraine and God forbid if China invades Taiwan? So Honda is answering those questions by moving their business away from China to protect their company and their customers. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Kirk. If you're interested in Japanese cars, make sure to subscribe. I'd love to have you along for all the news updates and I will be driving the CRV hybrid this fall. So make sure you're stay tuned for that because I want to bring you that hands-on coverage. But let's dive into separation from China. Honda accelerates response due to changes in security environment. They're saying Honda is considering structuring its international part supply, supply chain to decouple China from the rest of the world. Honda's move could affect other automakers that have supported Japan's manufacturing industry. I mean, the biggest ones that come to mind are going to be, of course, Toyota and Nissan, their largest competitors from Japan. They are saying Japanese companies are facing changes in the international situation, such as being forced to reassess their Russian business following the invasion of Ukraine. And in order to continue business in China, which has become the largest trading partner, it is essential to rebuild the supply network in light of changes in the economic security environment, such as the increasingly tense situation in Taiwan. Now, Automotive News has even more to say about this. They're saying Honda would keep its supply chain in China for the Chinese domestic market, and they would build a separate and secure supply chain for the markets outside of China. Things are getting dicey. Nearly 40% of Honda's total volume and auto production took place in China this past year. Now, Honda is one of the manufacturers that's getting hit the worst from the lack of supply, especially the microchips. If we look at their total sales, including Acura here in North America, well, specifically USA, for the first half of 2022, Honda in total is down 46% from last year. It has nothing to do with demand for their product. Their demand is extremely high. The amount of days vehicles are sitting on the lots is next to nothing. If we look at the Acura side, even the TLX from Acura is down 56% on the year so far. The MDX, are best seller, is down 37%. RDX, one of their best sellers as well, over 52% down. If we look on the Honda side, Accord down 33%, Civic down 56%, Clarity rest in peace, Insight rest in peace as well. But CRV, their cash cow, down 43%, HRV down 6%, but that's going to go even further down now that they have the new model, which the Parts aren't as widely available because they're going to be shared more with the Civic, which remember the Civic is down 56%. So that CRV is going to be down more than likely as well in the near future. Odyssey down 56%, Passport down 24, Pilot down 37, and originally down 11%. They're getting absolutely hammered by the lack of parts coming out of China. And so they have to do something drastic to protect their business and therefore their customer base as well. Now, interestingly, automakers often source their stuff not only out of Japan for cost reasons, but Japan's a hotbed for natural disasters, tsunamis, mudslides, earthquakes, volcanoes, monsoons. I don't know what whatever Mother Earth can throw at a place, a location. Japan gets it all. They don't mind shipping out and delegating outside of the country in order to protect their businesses at home. Now, keep in mind, Honda has not mentioned anything about this. This is just what Sanke is reporting from their own sources. Mazda out of Hiroshima, Japan said last month it would ask its part suppliers to increase stockpiles inside Japan and produce components outside China after lockdowns destabilized supply, forcing it to shut down domestic production for 11 days in April and May. Mazda is seeking to include higher domestic inventories and diversification of production outside of China when forming contracts with suppliers for designing new models in the long term. Now, Toyota continues to revise its estimation of production because they just don't know how secure the supply chip supply is going to be. Last month, they brought down that estimation of production to 850,000 units. And then this month they're saying it's going to be boosted to 900,000 units per month for the next few months through November. But they're saying it remains difficult to look ahead due to the spread of COVID-19 and other factors such as the governmental restrictions in China around COVID-19. But Toyota somehow is keeping their estimation, their forecast of vehicles 
to 9.7 million units. Honda, on the other hand, has been completely decimated. So they must have different suppliers or Toyota may be able to shore up their fair share of their parts a lot better than a smaller company like Honda. It's really hard to say why Honda is getting beat so much harder when it comes to mass production. For Toyota, the Motomachi plant seems to be the one that's most product, uh, most affected, I should say. All those models you see right here are extremely low volume. That's why their overall picture isn't changed hardly at all. Gio Yaris doesn't sell in volume. They can't make enough of them. Same thing with the Lexus LC. It's a very expensive $100,000 vehicle. There's not a huge demand for it either. They sell that at a very low volume. Subaru Solterra and BZ4X production is being um, crimped down as well to two parts and maybe not knowing how to fix the wheels falling off. And then you have the Toyota Mirai and the current Crown also having production issues. What does this mean maybe for the GR uh, Corolla coming later this year? Hard to say if the GR Yaris is having a lot of production issues, you can bet the GR Corolla will is too. Maybe there's light at the end of the tunnel here. I figured I'd end with this article over at Nikkei Asia, Japan startup to mass produce Produce new parts that increase EV range. I would assume that these parts could also be used in non-EVs as well. These are gallium oxide semiconductors that reduce the power needed uh, to propel the vehicle. This company is called Flosphia, and it is made up of Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, Toyota Motor Affiliate, uh, Denso, and the Development Bank of Japan as investors. They will mass produce semiconductors that use gallium oxide and alternative to silicon as a semiconductor material. These can reduce power loss by 70% compared to the current semiconductor devices. In addition, they can reduce EV power consumption by 10%, leading to longer cruising ranges on a single charge. They'll have monthly production capacity of several hundred thousand units by summer of 2023, and the devices will be sold to auto parts makers. So therefore, Honda and Nissan should be able to get their hands on these parts while Mitsubishi and Toyota, well, through Denso, probably are going to make the most money through it. Well, and of course, the Bank of Japan. And keep in mind, Mitsubishi, Toshiba, and Fuji hold together about 20% of the world market share in power semiconductors. And then you add Flosphia or Flosphia to the mix. The world continues to be a complete question mark with this supply chain. Wars erupting and pending war in certain situations. You have the change from combustion engine cars to electric cars also complicating everything and the requirement for chips is greater than ever. Do you think Honda is doing the right thing? Only sourcing parts from China for vehicles built for China and sourcing parts outside of China for vehicles built outside of China. It makes a lot of sense to me, especially when the rest of the world operates very, very differently than what China is doing right now. I try to stay out of politics on this channel and I try not to give too much personal opinion because it can get messy if I say really anything. But the current market right now is more tied to politics than it's ever been with EV tax credits, with the abolition of gas engines in certain places. Then you have governments reducing the ability for companies to just function as normal, which is affecting not only the auto industry, but every single manufacturing sector out there that I'm aware of. So it's very interesting. But if you made this one in the video, haven't hit the like button, I'd appreciate that. Subscribe for more Japanese and Korean auto news. Catch you in the next one and peace out.